setting up the anchor so we can anchor here. Uh, Kimmy's gonna drag behind the boat with the mask on and look for the patch of sand. And I'll chuck the anchor over the front of the boat and then if it gets on the sand, she'll give me the thumbs up and I'll back down and I'll put two little floats on the line so the anchor and the chain and all of the road is kind of picked up off the floor. The whole point of all of this is not to snag the coral. What do you know about this island? Not much, to tell you the truth. I know it was inhabited at one point, and I know it's the Queen's Island. It belongs to the British, and it's part of the Pitcairn Islands, which is Pitcairn, Oeno, Henderson, this one, and uh, Ducey, the one we just went to. The weather was too bad at Ducey, which was actually too bad because they had a big lagoon inside that, that volcano, but the weather's really nice here, so we're gonna anchor here and check this check this one out. You said 17 meters, yeah? Look at that wave over there. It's a nice wave. When we planned our route across Pacific, it was clear to us that we had to go to Pitcairn Island as it's a legend in the sailing community. The rest of the Pitcairn Islands, though, were kind of unknown to us. We decided, if the weather is right, to try and see each of them. So now here we are in Henderson Island, where there's not much on the internet about, especially in terms of sailing. Where to anchor, whether there's a safe dinghy pass somewhere on the island, all that we have to scout out for ourselves. Luckily, after two years of full-time cruising, we have a little bit of experience. And after a little while of driving around, we found a good spot to drop the anchor. We are officially anchored at Henderson Island. It was quite tricky to get the anchor down without hooking it on coral or having the chain chafe on coral. But we did it. We put uh, a bunch of floats on the chain and we are about ready to go ashore. Unfortunately, our dinghy, <laughs> the everlasting problem, is um, not quite in the mood to take us in right now and we just wanna have it, you know, as a security measure. We've been trying to start it for about half an hour. James just put it on the working bench and um, has been cursing and screaming for the last 20 minutes. But uh, it looks as if He might be a maniac, but he's good at what he's doing, so I'm keeping him. Hey, it's even running on idle. This is, this is very good. It's still a little rough, but it runs. Let's put it back in and let's go to this island. I'm getting really sick of working on this thing, man. The plan right now is to go in somehow without swamping the dinghy or losing any legs or arms and uh, explore the island, steal some coconuts and we're gonna teach you guys what is, what is so special about this island in the middle of nowhere. After that, we might um, try to ride that wave that is like 100 meter from us to the side and it just curls forever. Both of us are not, no surfers and the last time we actually surfed was in Costa Rica and we did it like twice and we've been carrying around the surfboards for so long. That wave looks dangerous and very tempting so we might get that done as well today. Let's go! We are super grateful that the weather allows us to stay here in Henderson. 
Not only does this island look very different to any island we've ever seen, but it actually is. Henderson is a raised atoll, which means that it used to be a normal atoll with a reef underwater and a lagoon inside, but then due to volcanic activity in the area, namely Pitcairn emerging from the sea, the whole atoll got pushed up. That's why you can see these very characteristic cliffs emerging steep from the water. If you look closely on this shot, you can actually see that the whole island is lower in the middle. That's what used to be the lagoon. Walking around at the beach, you can still see the old coral formations, which are now petrified. I promised you that there was something really special about this island. Henderson Island is super remote. Its only neighbors being Pitcairn and the uninhabited Ducey Island. It is actually so remote that that alone got Henderson Island a spot on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list. It's got its own endemic species and it's barely touched by humans. Now, here's the bomb. Henderson is also the most densely plastic polluted island in the world. That is fucking crazy. That is insane. That's right. This lonely island paradise is heavily affected by the world's plastic problem. The only reason this beach here looks relatively clean is that we're in the lee of the island and the windward beach is where most of the plastic trash accumulates. Also, a cleanup crew from the neighboring Pitcairn Island came through here two weeks prior to our visit. James walked up and down the beach the last 10 minutes and he picked up the biggest piece of plastic that he saw and this is what he got. So most of what we found is fishing stuff. This is all for fishing, buoys for fishing, buoys for boating. This probably came off a boat a long time ago. So we don't have room on the boat or the weight capacity for all of the trash but we're going to take the big stuff and hopefully we can give it to somebody in Pitcairn. A lot of people like to use these as uh, ornaments, and I actually think we can use these two on the boat, but that big one, this thing weighs like 25 pounds. We found a lot, a lot, a lot of rope. There's a rope everywhere on the beach, snagged in the rocks. And it's been there so long and been hit by waves so long that it's just in there. It's, it's part of the island now. It's part of the island now. Um, it's sad to see such a beautiful place be so polluted. And it's so far off, that's what strikes me the most. It's insane that it's so far off civilization. Yeah. And we managed to pollute this place without even touching it. Another thing that we found a lot of is plastic bottles. This is single-use plastic. This was probably laundry detergents or fabric softener that somebody filled up, sold, and now it's on the beach in the most remote island in the world. It sucks. It sucks to see that. If you can, use bulk items. Don't use, don't use single-use plastic. This is why. Okay, let's gather some of this stuff up and go. Because this island is so remote, there is no human introduced species on this island. Which is why this is a very special place for scientists to learn more about evolution and the like. Henderson is basically what a world before humans looked like. If you ignore all the plastic trash that is. Here is also the largest marine reserve in the world. There is an abundance of fish and coral and the visibility unlike anything we've ever seen before. And at the same time, Henderson 
sets an horrific record. 671 plastic pieces were found per square meter. That makes Henderson the most densely plastic polluted place in the world. That is pretty sickening. But what's done is done. And sure, beach cleanups are great. But we have to rethink the way we handle our resources, especially plastic. From my perspective, it's completely irresponsible to leave the consumers to deal with their plastic waste. Not because I think the average person is not smart enough to take care of the trash correctly, but if companies are not being held responsible to recycle or otherwise reuse their packaging, then they have no financial reason to design packaging in a way that makes it easy to recycle. So far, they can use any combination of materials, even if that means that it's nearly impossible to recycle them, because in the end, we are left to deal with it. The result is an unbelievable waste of resources and an overflow of our landfills. And lastly, an unbelievable pollution of our rivers, lakes, and oceans. It doesn't have to be like that. As a matter of fact, it can't go on like this. Make companies responsible for their waste. And let's clean up our oceans, one piece at a time. Because if the ocean is not worth protecting, I don't know what is.